Next, holy grail for EVs, LFP batteries. Bart Riley and his co-founders bet their short-lived company, A123 Systems, on nickel and cobalt-free batteries 21 years ago. They anticipated that the battery technology would aid automakers in the emerging electric vehicle market. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Voltage. We are here to acknowledge you with all the latest high-voltage car updates and their features from top to bottom and also give you a brief analogy of them. So hurry up and subscribe to the channel and smash the notification bell not to miss any of our updates. With that being stated, let's jump into the business. Between 2008 and 2011, the Massachusetts-based business pitched Tesla on its batteries, Riley said, but the automaker turned them down. A request for comments from Tesla was not returned. A123 Systems attempted to offer Chevrolet Bolt batteries made by General Motors. GM, on the other hand, chose LG batteries, which rely on nickel and cobalt. A123 Systems was never profitable in the end. In 2012, the company declared bankruptcy. The bankruptcy enraged then-Republican presidential contender Mitt Romney, and it was one of the numerous failed green energy ventures that conservatives blame Obama for. What and how is it going to affect the industry? Will this increase productivity? How can companies now compete? While Riley's company failed, the battery on which he bet, lithium iron phosphate, or LFP, is proving to be a winner. Nickel and cobalt demand has soared in recent years, and automakers are implementing tactics to protect themselves from the volatile market. Tesla has already changed its tune, stating that roughly half of its vehicles sold in the first three months of this year do not include nickel or cobalt. Batteries like the ones Riley envisioned are becoming more common as automakers seek to avoid using nickel and cobalt, which are both rare and difficult to mine from the soil. In 2012, an employee of A123 Systems solders a printed circuit board at the company's Westboro, Massachusetts production facility. Riley is left to watch as other businesses profit from the opportunity he identified. Riley told CNN Business, It's incredibly painful to see others profiting on what we observed all along. Tesla and other manufacturers, including China's BYD, have resorted to the LFP battery, which was invented in the United States in the 1990s, but was mostly abandoned in electric vehicles in the United States. Experts say the technology may offer Tesla an edge over competitors who aren't employing it. Metals used in batteries are becoming as important to the auto industry as oil has long been. A battery is a device that stores chemical energy for subsequent conversion to electrical energy, and the chemistry utilized in various battery types has a significant impact on the cost, safety, power, and longevity of the battery. In the United States, most electric vehicles use a lithium-ion battery, which requires cobalt and nickel to work. While lithium is a comparatively abundant metal, cobalt and nickel are both scarce, expensive, and divisive. Nickel batteries necessitate a hazardous mining procedure, and the nickel market has recently been exceedingly unpredictable. In March, nickel prices jumped from $29,000 per ton to above $100,000. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, children are sometimes used to mine cobalt, and there are no safeguards in place. Despite these factors, the demand for the battery metals nickel and cobalt is expected to grow by 60-70% to over the next two decades. Because a shortage would be disastrous for their business, some automakers are striking direct supply deals with miners. The battery chemistry necessary to form the positive end of the battery during discharge, known as the cathode, differs from the lithium-iron phosphate batteries Tesla has invested in. While the battery still requires lithium, it does so with iron instead of metals like cobalt and nickel, which are scarce and expensive. LFP batteries were developed in the lab of University of Texas by Professor John Goodenough, who went on to win the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work on lithium-ion batteries. LFPs inspired initial excitement and investment in firms like Riley's A123 Systems, but interest has since waned. On a head-to-head -head comparison, the shortfall was always energy density, Riley explained. A123 did not win the contract. According to auto experts, automobile owners in the United States place a high value on a vehicle's range. The power capacity of LFPs produced in the 1990s and 2000s lagged well behind lithium-ion batteries, limiting the number of miles a motorist could go on a single charge. As a result, American automakers mostly shunned the technology. LFP batteries were used in GM's electric Chevrolet Spark, which first went on sale in the United States in 2013 and has subsequently been phased out. The Chevrolet Bolt, the current successor to the Spark, employs a nickel-cobalt battery. 
Chinese automakers, on the other hand, persisted with LFPs, owing to the battery's suitability for short-range vehicles. BYD, a Chinese manufacturer, has been credited by many battery experts with packing LFP battery cells more densely by removing the packaging. BYD, China's second most valuable automaker, sold 593,745 electric and hybrid vehicles in 2021 and is valued at more than $100 billion. BYD is credited by several battery special within packing LFP cells more densely by removing the packaging. A BYD battery is seen here, photo courtesy of Getty Images, Kyodo News. The LFP market is now dominated by China, according to Benchmark Mineral Intelligence, which researches the battery market. LFP batteries are used in 44% of electric vehicles sold in China, 6% in Europe and 3% in the United States and Canada. According to battery specialists, advances in LFP battery technology have increased their range. LFP's ability to improve was underestimated by us. It's come a long way, to be sure. CNN Business spoke with Rodney Hooper, a partner at RK Equity who advises clients on lithium and batteries. LFP batteries are now used in the majority of Tesla's standard range vehicles. The standard range Model 3 with an LFP battery has a range of 267 miles, which is comparable to the 280 mile range of the Volkswagen ID4, which utilizes a nickel cobalt lithium ion battery. Aside from the environmental benefits of not extracting cobalt and nickel, the batteries have a variety of other advantages. Because LFP batteries are more stable and less prone to catch fire than nickel and cobalt batteries, fewer safeguards are required. LFPs can also be charged many times, extending their longevity. They can charge up to 100% frequently, which isn't recommended for nickel and cobalt batteries because repeated full charges might shorten their life. According to Jared Kelly, who studies sustainability at Argo National Laboratory, a hub of battery development, LFPs emit 20% fewer greenhouse gases per unit of energy than traditional nickel and cobalt batteries. The promise of a circular economy in which old electric vehicle batteries are recycled and made into new batteries, making the planet more sustainable, is often touted by proponents of electric vehicles. According to battery specialists, this is less likely if electric vehicles switch to LFPs. Nickel and cobalt have gotten a lot of attention from recyclers because of their high cost and scarcity. At Lithium Facility Cycle in Rochester, New York, lithium-ion batteries are recycled. LFP recycling hasn't gotten much attention in the business yet. Recycling is vital, but the rationale behind it has to make sense. Ajay Kocha, CEO of battery recycler Lithium Cycle, told CNN Business. There is no incentive to reclaim iron from used batteries if it is still cheaper to mine fresh iron. Governments or customers may have to pay to have LFPs recycled. Adoption of LFPs may make American businesses more reliant on Chinese suppliers, who now produce the majority of LFPs. When challenged about relying on China for LFPs during a quarterly earnings call in October, Tesla executive Drew Baglino stated the company's goal is to localize important car parts on the continents where the vehicle is manufactured. Nonetheless, automakers other than Tesla have shown interest in the LFP technology. Rivian said in a statement to CNN Business that LFPs have great potential. It originally announced its intention to adopt LFPs for standard range vehicles last year. LFPs are expected to be in Volkswagen's smaller vehicles. Ford has stated that it is considering LFPs. What do you consider this as? And what are your viewpoints on this? Will this affect the production of products containing such batteries? Having said that, we have reached the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If yes, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. And it's high time for you to subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on to get all the updates on our works. See you soon. Until then, peace.